Hi, my name is Cathy Millett and this week we're looking at how to use 3D printers. So since 3D printing came into existence, the world of modelling has changed a lot. No longer do you have to be able to sculpt or produce something or buy something, you can actually make it yourself. You can even get a scan of yourself and 3D print that and I've had that done. It's brilliant. So the world of 3D printing has moved modelling forward by leaps and bounds and I found I now found an excuse to use it in almost everything that I do, sometimes when it's not even needed. So I've got two videos on this. The first one's going to look at my filament printer, which is an FDM printer printing PLA, a very basic easy setup. This printer is an Anycubic i3 Mega. It's a Chinese brand, they're not expensive. Mine was under £300, you can often get deals on that. Having said that, sometimes the quality to control on Chinese printers isn't quite as good. So when it came, it had a broken micro switch, which they provide a spare, so I just swapped it out. But you have to be willing, I think, if you're buying the cheaper end of the market, to be willing to tinker. But what I do suggest you do is when you've got your 3D printer, you join whatever support group. Mine's a Facebook group for any cubic. Join it and ask questions there if you get stuck. There are loads of people who are more than happy to share. So this 3D printer works by taking a spool of filament. Now I keep mine in plastic bags because if they get damp, they don't print as well. So I keep them in plastic bags with a few of those desiccating sachets you get just to keep them dry. And this is what the filament looks like. It's a, this is 1.75 mil and it's PLA. This is made from plants. I'm gonna print this in black. I've had this in before, so I just snip the end so it's nice and smooth and I can insert it into my printer. Now the first thing you need to do to get the filament in is to heat the printer. So whilst this is heating and it will make a fan noise in a minute, I'll just talk you through my 3D printer. First of all, over here, we've got my OctoPi. That is my print server and it's in a protective case. It's a Raspberry Pi, it's plugged in and it's plugged into the printer. This is the little camera and it's on this stand, which is just a light, so it points in the right place. That's the fan coming on and that blows cold air onto the nozzle head. This is the nozzle attachment. Um, this is where the nozzle's underneath and it prints. This is where the magic happens and the filament hits a heating element and is melted and squirted through this nozzle onto your bed. Then you've got the bed. Now this is just heating my bed up and this is a heated bed. Everything sticks a lot better to a heated bed. One of the problems you'll find with 3D printing is getting adherence. Now, you can just put a card in. This is an SDHC card and you can just put it in the side. I have a lot of problems with that. It didn't always print all the way through. So the filament goes down this side. It starts filling this long tube. You can just see it's inserted here and where it gets darker. And if I press filament in, it starts putting it through. So now I've got mine loaded. The next thing I need to do is level the bed. So I've set this to home and now I just turn the motors off. And when I do that, I can move this back and forth. Now over time, I find these pop up a little and they get a little bit loose. And you can see this one is just, I can't get a sheet of paper underneath. So if I just loosen these little wedges at the bottom, I can up or down this until a bit of paper goes underneath. Um, you always do things in diagonals. So it's righty tighty, lefty loosey. I can spend a lot of time going around in circles with these. Now it's ready to print. You can clean your base at this point and sometimes if I haven't used it for a while, I use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. So what's the first thing you need for a 3D print? We well, need a file. I decided to go to my friend Tim Williams and use some of his files because I've been wanting to print these for um, a while to go on my Port de Noit layout. All I have to do is click download and it pops up. So now you need a software program that will convert your files into a language that your 3D printer can print. In this case, it's G-Code and the Ultimaker Cura software that I've got works really well on my particular brand of machine. You might find that whatever brand machine you've got has got its own software or something. And I certainly use that for my resin printer. So I've set the profile to fine 0.1. And these are all the defaults you can see along here. And if these get a little scary, don't worry, you probably don't need to change very many of them. What I do find though is my initial layer out at 0.3 on this particular one sometimes comes adrift. So I tend to make it 0.3 just for that first 
layer. If you look at your Thingiverse settings, quite often it will tell you the print settings. This one's 0.1 millimeters. It used rafts and it used supports. There's not many other things that I would change. Sometimes I slow my print speed down. I've had a lot of problems with this being just quite fast. What I've tended to do is just halve my um, print acceleration and travel acceleration because I find it puts less jerks on. And I will always slow my um, initial speed down just to give it a little bit of a chance to just stick a bit more. So the next thing we need to think about is how is it going to stick to the plate? You're trying to stick something quite small that's coming out of a nozzle onto a flat plate. It doesn't always work. So what you need to do is, mine's a heated plate, which helps, but what I find is you need to prime your nozzle. It doesn't flow out for the first little bit of printing. If you're having problems with them sticking, then you can do a brim and that goes right up to the model and actually sticks the model down. And you can just choose brim or skirt here. It's one of the options. So that's it. I'm not changing very many of the defaults. I just slowed a couple of things down. So I've just opened all my files and you can see they've all come in very nicely. Actually, they're all the right way around. If I spin around it, um, they've all got their flat sides down. Sometimes I find um, they don't come in the right way up and you just need to spin them. And that's easy to do by selecting them and going over here and doing rotate. You just choose what you want to do. You can move them around. It kind of auto sorts them. You can right click and do arrange all models and it will arrange them into a neat little shape. So I prepare it and I do save to file. So one of the things you need to do is get your file from your computer to your printer. Now I find you can just use an SD card, but I found it errored on every fourth or fifth print and it would just stop halfway down the print. And that's probably because it's a Chinese cheaper printer. Um, but since I moved to using OctoPrint via a Raspberry Pi OctoPi print server, I've not had a single problem. Now, this is a little bit beyond basic and you don't need it to start off, but if you're gonna do a lot of printing, I find this very useful because you can check the temperature of your um, printer. You can look at the picture of it. So here's a lovely picture of my printer. So when I'm sitting here, I can check and see what it looks like. I can um, see what is actually printing when it's got stuff going. There's a little terminal bit, which I never use. And I can do a time lapse, which I'm gonna do here. If I want to print something, I can either drag or drop or just click upload and go to my right one. I want the G code. It will load the slate stack.stl or any of these STL files and try and convert it itself, but it's better to do the conversion in Cura. And I can press print. I've set that to go and you can see on my screen that my temperature is starting to rise on the base plate. This is heating up to 60 degrees, which is what it's set for PLA. Um, when that's heated up, then the nozzle will heat up so it's preheated and then it will start printing. Now, when you're doing small prints, skirts, such as I try in this one, don't work. Some of this didn't actually stick. So at this point I gave up and put a brim on it and left it to print again and it was much happier. So an hour later and we're finished. Now you can just pop these off, especially if it's a little bit cooler, this is still slightly warm. When you look at them, you can see the brim just there all around the edge. It's very easy to pop off. It hasn't stuck particularly well on these ones. So easy enough to pull off. There we go. There's the prints as they come out of the farm. This one's got a lot of support on it. Next comes a really tedious part of having a 3D printer, and that is either filing or filling. You can choose to fill all those layers that we've just put down with that nozzle, or you can file them away flat. But whatever happens, you have to do quite a bit of work to get some of the edges to look good. So here we are. I've done a bit of titivating, I've done a bit of filing. Now I do have to stress my printer is a very cheap printer, but you can see that the quality isn't quite what you would hope for when you're doing a wagon. Now it will do a rough, wagon and actually it did a lot better. I reprinted it without supports on the right and it looked much better. I was struggling to get those supports off at all on the left hand, the first print. And it, the structure's all there. And with a little bit of cleaning, you could get something that's quite reasonable. And at that price point, you know, it's okay. 
But at a similar price point to the left is my resin printer. And you can see what a difference that makes. You, the bolts are just much more defined. You can see the strapping. It's much, much better print. My 3D printer that's an FDM filament printer, it does have a little bit of a wobble on it and that shows up in my prints and I do need to sort that. But overall, I wouldn't print this with them. But why did I buy an FDM printer? Because I've already got a resin printer. So what to me is the advantage of this printer over a resin printer? Well, two things. One, bed size. Yep, you print on a bed or either on a bill plate on a resin one. And my resin printer is about this big and my FDM printer is about this big. I can get stuff in there that I can't get into a resin printer. And generally the bigger the stuff, the less quality you need on it. The main thing I built though was components and I churn out components like anything. I did this, which is the underneath for my servo motor holding and it's got all sorts of moving parts in it that throws my points. I've got all sorts of designs for coving the backdrops, doing little bolt mounting things, all of those widgets and gadgets and specialist stuff that you can cut from styrene and put together or use screws and go out and buy. I made them all on my 3D printer this time and it was so much fun to be able to do that. Overall, um, my FDM printer is not my first port of call for fine details. Anything small will go in my resin printer. That's next time's video. But I have used this printer far more than my resin one, printing out components. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I'm obviously just sort of starting my 3D printing journey. So if you've got any hints or tips, please put them down below. Any comments, any thoughts, put them there. Please don't ask me technical hard questions. I'm not the expert on 3D printing um, by a long ways. But I have found it incredibly useful. And thanks as always to my Patreons. They really support me. They allow me to do things like go away and play on 3D printers. And I found that invaluable. So guys, see you next time when we're looking at my resin printer.